But pleasure to introduce Miss Sharita Matthews, now Davis, to the Coach Kelly Show. Yay! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining me for my very first show, my inaugural show. It wouldn't even be fitting if I didn't have you because. It's been there for since the beginning. Even before I even met you, I knew of your work and it inspired me and it still inspired me to this day. So how did this brand, Sharita Matthews, because every time I looked at the, the pictures, it was always on the front cover. Like it was always on the front cover. Um, how did this brand start? Like just, just share something about just the brand, Sharita Matthews. Well, hi everybody. Um... First, Kelly, I have to say I'm so excited for you. You know, I can't ever just talk about me without um, saying thank you for the opportunity. And just, I'm, I appreciate the honor that you always give me. Um, this brand, this word called brand is new to me. 25 <laughs> years ago, we didn't call this branding. 25 years ago, it was just consistency in business. And that's how you became a household brand. So early on from childhood, my family taught me the importance of my name. My name did not just belong to me, but it belonged to my family. So from a toddler, they say I always introduced my first and last name. No one could just call me Sharita. Everybody had to say Sharita Matthews. Okay, okay. Now, you know, I have to add the Davis <laughs> to it. So my husband knows on the weekends I'm Sharita Davis, but through <laughs> business, just being consistent with what I attribute, connecting myself with and put out consistent content. And now they call that branding. It, it just was a no brainer. It was like, make sure that you valued everything you participated in and you gave your best. And my name always brought a certain amount of excellence because I always gave excellence with it. So that was branded back then. So everything looked cohesive, I had cards, everything. So I would say, you know, just whatever your brand is, make sure it's consistent, make sure people can read it. Um, now like, oh, she's this, this, all over the place, nothing matches. It's like Doritos label is the same no matter what color the bag is, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing, but 25 years ago, we didn't call it brand. Right, 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 right. <laughs> because, you know, at one point, I mean, now it's social media, you have filters, you have edit, and, you know, early on in my career, you know, it was, you just had your business card and you just had your brand. So how do you... How do you keep a consistent, successful brand? Now say yes to everything. I, I never said yes to everything. I think people are so eager to be in business and to be recognized, they don't even pay attention to the quality of the product they attach their name to. I've always been known as um, tough. 
I've always been known to she don't play, but that's fine. You know what I mean? Because with that, brought the excellence that people knew I stood by. So, I mean, it's great to be honored and it's great for people to want you everywhere, but if it doesn't line up with the vision that I'm trying to portray, I can't be connected to it because that's a part of my brand. That's what branding is. Don't be so eager to participate into any and everything. And today, you know, I'm excited. Everybody wants to be entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs were raised. It just wasn't given. Nowadays, it's so cliche-ish, you know? It's kind of disheartening to a veteran because we really, the foundation is what really created your brand. Not just because you have a couple of followers or you could afford some business cards or things like that, but just make sure you, whatever you attach yourself to, that it represents your brand and quality. And don't be so eager for a, a yes, though. Mm -hmm. Say no. Mm -hmm. So what was that um, moment in your life that you decided that you wanted to start your own business? Um, well, <laughs> being very strong-headed, um, you know, I've also always knew what I liked. So um, I was also was taught if it wasn't something you really like, create it. And that's how it what made me start an environment I want to work in. Um, I work with some great teams through the years and I love them. And I love working with teams. However, as I just grew as a person, mentally, spiritually, everything, um, I needed an environment that was conducive for who I am and who I'm becoming. So that that and this and this and I still love working with brands and other people, but um, I just say sometimes you have to create what it is you're looking. You know, we all are called to be an answer here on the earth, and my my business is my answer for me. So how do you just with everything? It's just like everything is just so fast paced, and you know you can be just pulled in different directions. How do you manage and like live in each moment? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's an ongoing um, daily confession okay. and something that you strive for daily. Some Sometimes you get it all the way right and sometimes you don't. So um, constant self-introspects of yourself. First of all, write it down. Whatever it is that your vision and your goal is, whatever it is, I say write it down. And the reason why I say write it down is so that you have... Hello everybody, it's your girl Coach Kelly from the Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. Listen in, join the conversation each and every Monday on Listen Vision Live. We're going to be having so much fun talking about business, personal development, and financial freedom. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be life changing. Hello everybody, it's your girl Coach Kelly from the Coach Kelly Speak Show. I wanted to just drop in and say thank you so much for viewing our show. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Don't forget, if you miss any of the episodes, don't worry, you can go straight to YouTube at Coach Kelly Speaks. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and it's happening each and every Monday at Listen Vision Live. See you next week. Like your journey leading up to body massage. <laughs> <laughs>
Sure. So my journey leading up to Body by Tasha has been um, quite the journey, if you will. I started out in uh, corporate America. Let me back up a little bit, actually. Um, I was a teen mom, had my first child at the age of 16, and that's a large feat in itself. Um, and a lot of people, you know, really counted me out at that time. However, I was raised by a very, very, very strong woman that just always instilled in me to continue what you've started. Whatever that is, continue what you started. So as a result of me having a child at such a young age, it just propelled me to the next dimension at a very young age because I knew that I had to go further because I now had this person depending on me. Um, from that, life just happened, if you will, and uh, learned that my, my baby um, had special needs. And from that, it really uh, made me look at life completely different because not only do I have this child at 16 years old, but now I have this child that requires more than the norm, if you will. And from that, I just really became um, a student of what it was that he needed. And I began just to sow into his life. And so from that, it just developed this person of uh, nonstop, if you will. I just uh, learned how to persevere through it all. And from that, um, I've always found myself on the other end of helping people get to the next level. So from there, I graduated college, I, mean, I graduated high school because I was a teen, of course. Went on to college, became a cosmetologist. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> um, became a cosmetologist. Um, and then just have always been in the entrepreneur spectrum, if you will. And just did um, a lot of different things. So overall, from that journey, I just began to um, engulf myself in people and everybody else and, and except, except myself. And from that, it began to develop um, Body by Tasha. Body by Tasha was actually uh, my buddy fitness initially. Um, and that's simply what it is. Be what, it, what it is, what it, what, it, what it said is what it is. And that's simply, I know that people wanted a buddy in the fitness industry and I was their buddy. It changed to Body by Tasha as a result of my clients transforming. And from their transformations, they began to call themselves Body by Tasha. So that's where the name came from. That is amazing. I did not know all of those things, but it's so fitting because it, it just seems like you have that mantle of entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, it's like you wear it well. And so I know that you, you know, you just left corporate America. Woo! Yes. Woo, 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 woo. And so what does it mean to be the execution trainer? That's yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the execution strategist is just awesome in itself. What I've found over the years is that God has given me the gift of execution. Once I start anything, I do it. Once I connect to anything, I'm going to finish it. And what I've learned over time is that people are full of inspiration, but they lack execution. They get inspired, they get fired up, but then they never finish so anything yes, that they start. And if yes, yes. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited. I mean, this is literally um, one of a, a dream come true. You know, so to see your dreams come true is really amazing. Um, God is just, we were just sitting here talking about how amazing God really is. Yeah, I mean, he, I always say he liked that. I mean, I use my terms because I can relate to him that way he's a good father he's a good dad he just he is literally just everything and so i can't even i mean it, it's just amazing yeah. and so brilliant bowman <laughs> wife minister author uh, god chaser purity sure. activist <laughs> now co-host of the tim and Boo. Ah, <laughs> who is that person <laughs> who is that person? I don't even know who that is. I mean, well, I I don't, like you said, God is like that. Um, really, uh, just where I am now is a true testament of when you honor God. Like, literally, I've given my life. She said I was a God chaser. I am a God chaser. I chase God wherever, okay? <laughs> Listen, I need so much of God all the time. So, really, those accomplishments, accomplishments are nothing without Christ, nothing without God. I, I just got some. <laughs> you got to bear with me because for me, it's like seeing 
seeing people mm-hmm. God chase mm-hmm. and seeing once they make this commitment mm-hmm. it's almost if God just kind of pushes you almost like the Spike Lee movie how you mm-hmm. just standing there he just pushing right. you right along I, I see that in your life yeah and I just see him continuously just pushing you forward what is that like um it's overwhelming <laughs> it's it's very overwhelming because for a long time it wasn't that it wasn't that fast paced you know consistently seeing the blessings of God and sometimes it's that that still moment or that quiet moment or that drought where it's like, God, where are you? Like I've been living right, I've been doing right. Um, so I, I believe it's just the consistency, you know, that I've shown throughout the years that has helped me be where I am today, where it's like, okay, God was like, you know what? I'm not gonna let you wait no more, no longer. It's just gonna be like, boom, 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 boom. And then the Amos just talks about uh, things will happen so fast that your head will swim. And literally, my head is swimming, okay? (laughs) Like swimming because things are just happening so fast. But I believe it was um, coming together with my husband um, really uh, ticked off everything and just started blowing up for us. Yeah. So if you you can, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I know there's a lot, but if you can share that journey. Okay, I can do that. Um, well, at, at the age, most people know my story, but at the age 13, I decided that I was going to remain a virgin and I was going to live this lifestyle fully out and not just, um, you know, say it, but not really mean it. Because a lot of people say, you know, they're going to live for God and they're going to do it, but they really don't do it. And that wasn't my commitment. I remember at my birthday party, you were there. And I say, you know, this is not just something I'm saying, but this is something I truly mean that I really want to honor God with my life and with my body and all that I am and all who I will be. Um. Hello, everyone. It's your girl, Coach Kelly from the Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. I'm here to talk about my brand new book, The 30 Day, 30 Minute Visionary Journal, Awakening the Finisher Within. I wrote this because I wanted to inspire other people to be finishers in their own personal journey of business and everyday life. So writing this book has really helped me to organize my thoughts a lot better. And it has also just made me look at things different and not put so much pressure on myself because before I would try to compile so much information in at one time, but now it has slowed my pace down a lot and I'm able to really plan things out in a 30 day, in a 30 minute manner. And so I think that now, you know, with different projects that I'm working on, I feel that I'm a little more confident in what it is that I'm doing because I've actually planned it out better. So I hope that people who get this book will have a deeper appreciation for number one, who they are, what they've been called to, and the people group that they've been called to as well. Um, I also want people to have a clear and step-by-step guide to how to fight against fear and procrastination. I hope that this book will help you to win in each and every level of your life, each and every area of your life. I want this book to change the way you see yourself. When you look yourself in a mirror, that you won't see yourself through the eyes of fear, but that you'll see yourself through the eyes of faith, knowing that you are a finisher and that you will finish each and every project that you put your hands on. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you, gracias, (laughs) because without you, I would not be able to do what I do, what I love every day, from styling my clients, to the boutique, and now my new show, The Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. This has been an exciting journey for me. I'm inspired by each and every last one of your comments, how you share my posts, you know, going on the YouTube, leaving comments, just all of that just warms my heart every time I read it. And so I wanted to just let you know that you can buy my book, on my website at www.coachkellyseeks.net. Thank you again for tuning in. 
And I love you guys so much. Thanks. It's been on ever since. And so today's show is all about, you know, going through adversity and just turning to God and saying, I trust you. What's next? Let's go to the next level. So it is with great honor that I introduce my first guest, Connie Gilmore, the visionary, the mom, the friend, uh, God chaser. <laughs> so Connie, thank you so much for being a part of this show. I'm so, so excited. I'm so proud of you to just see where God is taking you. I'm not going to cry because I'm telling you, <laughs> but I honor you and I'm so excited about your event that you're having and I just had to have you on my show. I am so, so, so <laughs> proud of you. Um, you know, just watching all of this unfold and, um, you know, the conversations that we've had about this coming into fruition and then to actually see it happen for you. Um, you have been an amazing support for me and I am just so happy for you and so happy to be here. So, thank you. And so, you have this organization um, called The Premature Widow. Um, how can you share with our audience how it all began? So, um, in June of 2014, um, I became a premature widow. I lost my husband um, at the age of 38, and um, I guess the, I don't. There is there there are no words to describe that moment. Um, but during that time, and as the days and months followed, um, you know, I kept realizing that when I looked around, widows didn't typically look like me. Um, you know, they looked like my mom, my mother-in-law, aunts, uncles. You know, those that had had. 40 plus years of marriage and the children were grown and moved on to college and that type of thing. But for me, that wasn't my story. You know, my youngest child was six years old at the time. And so um, the support for someone in my age group, it just it just wasn't there. And um, my first um, opportunity to meet someone who was in a similar situation was um, at a life after um, death event that I um, was on a panel for um, Unique Walker, who's your, actually um, um, your guest later yes. in the show. Um, and so I met a young lady there who had uh, gone through a similar experience and we both talked and realized that, you know, no, there weren't any resources, not in the community, unfortunately, not even in the church um, that really spoke to the widow in and of itself. You know, there's bereavement, there's singles ministry, but none of those ministries, yes. you know, Unique were Walker, to us. the ah. kingdom chick, the mom. The flat out preacher. <laughs> preacher. Preacher. Ooh. I know. Girl. I know. I know. <laughs> so welcome you me. Thank you. Welcome. Girl. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm so excited. I, this show is amazing. I mean, I'm just in awe. I'm, I mean, like I'm really shaking, but I'm in faith knowing that God is up to something. Yeah. So I'm excited. So first question, how did you create your genius in a time of adversity? Wow. <laughs> um, you know, I like to say that my rock bottom situation was the place where I was able to be in God's perfect will for my life. Um, because, you know, I feel like God gives us opportunity to just do what we want to do. And I did a lot of stuff that I wanted to do. And after I had done what I wanted to do, I was faced with this rock bottom, life changing situation that actually placed me in God's perfect will for my life. And so um, I believe that any valley season will um, bring something out of you that you never knew existed. Something that was like always there, but like literally got pulled out of me. And so, um, of course, I had already done Kingdom Chick. Mm -hmm. um, it started off being a reality show concept. And then God said, I want you to start doing some events. He gave me a t-shirt brand and the rest was history. Um, Bibles Over Bags was my signature t-shirt for uh, Kingdom Chicks. And I got a lot of slack 
for putting out Bibles over bags. People that knew me was like, you know, how are you going to say Bibles over bags when you've had all of this stuff? And like, what does that mean? And I, I remember um, Pastor Mike saying that people would bash things that they did not understand. And I realized that people really didn't understand it, but I had to push it and I had to tell my story, you know, um, and that's exactly what I did. But Bibles over bags and Kingdom Chicks opened up so many doors for me. That is awesome. So what was it like leading up to journey? Because we, we see this this successful woman. You have your own university. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is... Every Monday, 5 p.m. on Listen Vision Live. Set your timer every day. This is Alicia Queen. She is a real estate entrepreneur, and the whole show is really about just you know maintaining your nine to five, you know doing your you know doing your um your side business, which most of us is not a side business. <laughs> it's another full time job, right? And so welcome, Alicia. Thank you. Show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. It's, it's nice to watch you live out your dream too. Um, we go way, way uh, back. <laughs> When I was very little, so it's nice to see how you know, how you are, you came, and, and certainly inspiring to watch you live out your dreams. So Alicia, the mom, you know, super mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody follows Alicia, you'll know that her whole page is about her family. It's like family, 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 real estate. You know? <laughs> but you you can see her love and passion with she, what you're doing, even in your own family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what made you choose real estate? So I think that um, I wanted something, I wanted to do something different. Um, I wasn't necessarily happy in my daytime job. And one day I posted a status, kind of complaining about it on Facebook. And I had someone to inbox me and suggest real estate to me. And um, I didn't tell anyone, I didn't go with it. It was just kind of like, you know, no. And then maybe about five or six months later, um, my husband told me he had a dream that I was a real estate agent. Wow. So for me, I felt like, well, this must really be something. So um, he told me he knew a few real estate agents that I can reach out to because I wanted to know the pros and cons. If I was getting into this, what really, were the pros and cons and so 
I reached out and I spoke to one who's now like my mentor. Um, she's really great in real estate and doing things. And she kind of gave me the pros and cons of it. And I felt like it was something I could do. So I just kind of, like you said, just, you know, I was like, um, with, you know, in the background looking and mm -hmm. I decided to just go for it. And just jump on in there. Jump on in, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what are some of the steps that you had to take to get to, um, to become where you are now? What did you have to do? So it was very easy to get in and I think that's what it was like for me. Um, I, I did go to college and get my bachelor's degree, but I didn't love school. So I knew I didn't want to go get a master's or do anything like that. Um, I went to real estate school um, to get my salesperson's license. It was only a six week class. I went three days a week from six to 10 um, and then I was done. I had to of course take my state exam. Um, and then I followed my mentor into Keller Williams where she was. So I kind of already knew what brokerage I wanted to go into. And that was it. So it was, it was very easy to get in. Um, <laughs> Everyone has to be you used to it. Now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your new book. So 10 dates later, here it is here. Here you go. <laughs> 10 Dates Later is um, 10 short, funny stories of awful dates I've been on in my 20s. And it's, it's really funny, it's really honest, it's really transparent. Um, I have a very candid conversation with the reader, which is what I think a lot of people enjoy because I share like, my thoughts during certain situations where I couldn't really say what I was thinking, but I share with the reader what I was thinking. So that's always fun. Um, yeah, a lot of people have been really, really, you know, warm and receptive to it. And I think it's just because of how honest I was. Mm -hmm. Very transparent, mm -hmm. you know, with the um, parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> I was living for, like, really, girl, you know, <laughs> and you feel like you're having a conversation with you. Yeah, you know, and, that's, and, and that's what I wanted. I wanted people to feel like they were talking to their best friend. But, because a lot of people go through all of these things, but a lot of women don't like to talk about the process. Everyone talks about, you know, the wedding and the ring and the happy ever after. But there's a there's a process before you get there, and so that just shed some light on that. Yeah. So what was your favorite? Uh, what was your greatest lesson in all of these dates that kind of shaped you to where you are now? To always um, protect my peace. I think that's so so important. I think um, a lot of women and, and men, they will sacrifice certain things, you know, to keep their mate happy or, you know, to keep a relationship going. And in the process, you can lose yourself. Um, and so in one particular chapter, chapter 28, which is like the not funny chapter, you know, I had really just given up my peace because I was so um, determined to get this brain. You know, I just had a one track mind and care what was going on, what happened, who it was. I just wanted to get this brain. And in the process, I lost myself. And so it was just a really, you know, this wake up call for me to really, um, to look at myself to see how I had like, just dropped some of my perspectives and just like wasn't, I, I just wasn't being wise anymore, you know? So, you know, just a very honest look at it and just sharing that with people. And I think a lot of people more than they like to admit have been through that where they have sacrificed their self or sacrificed their peace, you know, to keep a man or to keep a woman, yeah. You know? And you don't have to. Uh -uh, no. I mean, this is an example that you can own your standards and your values and put yourself first. Yes. And I have this motto with this um, teacup. Mm -hmm. And this is just a teacup analogy that the t what's on the teacup is for you. What's in that teacup is for you. Mm -hmm. And what's on the salsa is for everybody else, <laughs> you know? Because if your cup is empty, you can't give anything. You can't pour into other people.
business, don't even worry about it. You can go straight to our YouTube channel and Coach Kelly speak. Well, this week we're talking about winning through the storms. And then later, we're going to talk about friendship and business. It is going to be a fabulous show. My special guest this week is Tanya Freeman, the mom, the purpose pusher, now author. Welcome to Coach Kelly Speaks, Tanya. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Kelly. Absolutely. So, um, the story that I talked about earlier about um, how this gigantic tree fell, it was split in two, one side bloomed and the other didn't. What would you say to that? That is it's phenomenal. I mean, you know, like we often talk about, um, you were talking about the cherry blossoms and that was something that I had revelation of back in, was it March, when they were preparing for that. And God just showed me that regardless of the storms, there's still purpose. The cherry blossoms still blossom, not all of them, but I looked at the ones that did. Wow. And so that's that's the same thing for that tree. Yeah, half of it was split and half of it didn't work. Wasn't, you know, messed up, but the other mm-hmm. half fully blossomed. And so like you said, instead of focusing on because I was thinking about the one that bloomed. Mm-hmm. I was actually looking up. I was looking at the one that didn't bloom. Yes. I was like, oh, it didn't bloom, but then the other side bloomed. But you saying I'm I'm focused on what bloom. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I am. And that's what we have to do in life. I mean, so often we look at the negative things instead of the positive. And it's more positive than it is negative. The Bible says, magnify me. You know, and so when we magnify something, it gets bigger. And so if you're gonna magnify the negative, then that's what's gonna mag- get bigger in your life. So why not magnify the tree blossoms that did? Why not magnify the storm that you did survive? You know, and so I'm honored to be here. Thanks for having me, Kayla. Absolutely. I mean, really, I'm yes, really excited yes. to be um, here. This book was so, um, it was great for me because although, um, and I don't want to rush the book, <laughs> um, but I'm excited because just the, just the, the, um, the cover alone is very inspiring. You see this young lady is this horrific storm in the background, but she's dancing, you know, and so, Today we're going to talk about how do you dance in the middle of a storm? How are you going to, you know, dance in the middle of a tragedy? You know, how do you dance in death, sickness, whatever you are in business? Thank you so much for zooming in. I think that this title is is really perfect about a healing process. And it was your healing process, right? Absolutely. It was this this book is my life. This book is, is, is a true testament. Um, of my story and thank God that you were there every step of the way so you know that this book is authentic Mm -hmm. this is the real deal Mm -hmm. Um, and you know not to rush or anything but I didn't want to put it out you know that I Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to put it out hello everybody it's your girl coach Kelly from the coach Kelly speaks talk show listen in join the conversation each and every Monday on listen vision live We're going to be having so much fun talking about business, personal development, and financial freedom. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be life changing. Hello everybody, it's your girl Coach Kelly from the Coach Kelly Speak Show. I wanted to just drop in and say thank you so much for viewing our show. It's been absolutely phenomenal. Don't forget, if you miss any of the episodes, don't worry, you can go straight to YouTube at Coach Kelly Speaks. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and it's happening each and every Monday at Listen Vision Live. See you next week.
feel like you're working. This business that I'm in, Shades of Skin, it's not work for me. It's I love doing it. And so every time I'm on, I, I have a client, it's like I put everything I have into that person, into that client. And so just what Lita said, do your research, get a business coach, find out who your audience is, find out what you're passionate about and make it happen. You have to make it happen. You have to drive. This is your car. You have to drive it. Absolutely. That was awesome. So my final question is, in taking your business to the next level, what does it mean to inspire, develop, and lead by example? All right. That's good. Good question, Kelly. Um, inspire. I would say inspire. Be yourself. Um be the person that you are destined to be. Um, be positive, be motivating, be uplifting. Um, don't give this negative connotation or be a negative Nancy about life. Um, that's pretty much that part. Oh, and just leading by example. Leading right. by example. Um, it kind of all ties into the same thing, but just being um, being authentic, um, setting goals and accomplishing them. Um, do what you say you want to do. Um, be steadfast. Um, be coachable. That's that would be one. another yeah, one. That's be good. coachable. That's good because <laughs> yep. you have to you have to be teachable at all yes. times. Yeah. You know because you never know it all. Right. You know, like I have a mentor. You know, I prayed about a mentor too, mm -hmm. and it ended up being someone thirty years my junior you know but I'm so glad that's 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 God he gave her to me so right. I'm so grateful for that but always be honest you know be like I said go always go back to integrity be a one of your word Absolutely. treat people the way you want to be treated, treated. Yeah. you know and just just make sure you deliver on what you say you can do right yeah I think that's awesome you know and being um oh okay <laughs> so you just said that. How important is it to um, operate in integrity? Well, if you, you said, for instance, I already said, be a woman, a person of your word. If I set a client up for a three o'clock appointment, I should be ready to receive her at three o'clock. I should be already prepared before that three o'clock time gets there and make it, and, and they like that because people want you to be cognizant and they want you to appreciate their time. Time is the essence of life. How you spend it is very critical. So, you know, you make sure that you are timely, that your your services are rendered, you know, with excellence, that you have a clean place, that your tools you use are clean. Mm -hmm. You greet them mm -hmm. with kindness. You show kindness. It's not just in how you talk, it's how you walk, it's your fruit that you show other people, you know? And I like what you said, Leela, about being around positive right. people. Mm -hmm. You know, because, it, you know, I don't care how small the negative comment is, if it takes one second of my brain space, right, right. I have a problem with that. Right. Because that takes away from my creativity. Right. That takes away from me thinking about something positive, you know? That takes away from me going forward because I'm stuck in that moment. Right, right. So, you know, I try to stay away from people who are very negative. I pray for them. I don't hate them. I just try to stay away <laughs> from them. I also say that when you are, um, yeah, you lead by example. With integrity, um, you are your brand, you are your business. So, people are going to buy into you more so than actually the product and the services that, that you are selling. So, when you run something with integrity, that's how you developing your platform. That's how you developing right. your audience. That's how people yeah. are gravitating to you mm -hmm. because you are a woman of integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for continuously support this show. Um, you never know what it will take to do something. Well, I always say you never know what someone has to go through to give that yes. And so for me, you know, just if anyone knows my background, I was a very, very shy person. Hello, everyone. It's your girl, Coach Kelly from the Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. I'm here to talk about my brand new book, The 30 Day, 30 Minute Visionary Journal, Awakening the Finisher Within. 
I wrote this book because I wanted to inspire other people to be finishers in their own personal journey of business and everyday life. So writing this book has really helped me to organize my thoughts a lot better. And it has also just made me look at things different and not put so much pressure on myself because before I would try to compile so much information in at one time, but now it has slowed my pace down a lot and I'm able to really plan things out in a 30 day, in a 30 minute manner. And so I think that now, you know, with different projects that I'm working on, I feel that I'm a little more confident in what it is that I'm doing because I've actually planned it out better. So I hope that people who get this book will have a deeper appreciation for number one, who they are, what they've been called to, and the people group that they've been called to as well. Um, I also want people to have a clear and step-by-step -step guide to how to fight against fear and procrastination. I hope that this book will help you to win in each and every level of your life, each and every area of your life. I want this book to change the way you see yourself. When you look yourself in a mirror, that you won't see yourself through the eyes of fear, but that you'll see yourself through the eyes of faith, knowing that you are a finisher and that you will finish each and every project that you put your hands on. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you, gracias. <laughs> Because without you, I would not be able to do what I do, what I love every day, from styling my clients to the boutique, and now my new show, the Coach Kelly Speaks Talk Show. This has been an exciting journey for me. I'm inspired by each and every last one of your comments, how you share my posts, you know, going on to YouTube, leaving comments, just all of that just warms my heart every time I read it. And so I wanted to just let you know that you can buy my book on my website at www.coachkellyseeks.net. Thank you again for tuning in. And I love you guys so much. Thanks. Here live at Listen Vision with the King. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey. This King. first lady, Kim Lee King. I'm so excited. I'm I'm just really, really, I mean, I'm I was already nervous. I had my, my best friend to pray for me along the way. I'm like, listen, I need you to pray because I'm so nervous. It and I know that it's it's a matter of honor because I truly honor people and I honor people that um walking in purpose. And you know, when you're walking in purpose, it's not easy. You know, you you constantly having those daggers and mm -hmm. people and, you know, and just different things that's constantly telling you that you're not it. And how do you deal with all of the nuances that come your way? Because you live your, your relationship, you live your life in the public. How do you deal with that? Um, one thing about us is that we understand that our, our social media um, is public, but our life is private. Mm -hmm. And so we post things that we want you to see to encourage, really to encourage couples, uh, to, enc to encourage you in your relationship. We have a great uh, private life that we, we don't share with everyone. Uh, there's moments we get away and we slip away. We have to uh, make a conscious effort. Like today. Like today to have those moments. I was actually at Howard doing some work and, and, and my wife was here. She said, look, let's meet here today. So we always make that moment um, to just enjoy each other. Uh, we have a little thing we have to each other. It's called Team Us. It's Team Us. And, and we make it work like that. Yeah. So how do you, um, just in ministry, you know, walk, walking together in ministry, what is it because you are partners, how do you separate the partnership, the ministry, and just keep something for you guys outside of everything? I think you answer that better than me. <laughs> <laughs> more centered and focused than me. <laughs> Um, uh, ministry is ministry and it's never our job to be married to the church matter of fact Christ said the church is his bride so if I'm actually in love with his church 
then I'm committing adultery with what's his. Wow. And, and God don't want to cheat with me with his church. And so the church belongs to him. That's his responsibility. Um, that's what he's going to do. So it's our job just to feed the people, but not to fall in love with the people. Uh, we have relationships with the people, but we realize that those are God's people. And so our personal life is our personal life. Ministry is ministry. Home is home. Business is business. And we and we just learn how to uh, separate the two. Um, if not, it becomes very, very um, uncomfortable. And it's not fair for the people if we're trying to do something for them that only God can do. Wow, that's all. That's awesome. So, what would you say to um, a couple that's dating that feel they have a call to ministry on their life? Um, I can answer that. I think um, for me, I would tell a couple to always make quality time, and it, and, and it's, it's it always set traditions. Like I'm really big on traditions, and um, I always, you know, pastor thinks I'm a little corny. And but I am I'm very big on tradition. So we do Taco Tuesdays and Fatty Patty Fridays. <laughs> and those are my turkey burgers, which I make better than him. I make them better. So <laughs> hers, are fat, hers are the Fatty Patty. Mine's are the Patty Fatty Patty Patty Patty. So <laughs> McDonald's McDowell's. Right. He, he, he copies. And so anyway, we always have like some quality time we spend and we always try to set traditions because we're a new couple. And so we you know, want to have something that we look forward to. So tonight is our date night. So what we'll do tonight is we will, you know, just kind of rehash everything that happened over the week last week and some things, some goals that we want to accomplish this week. Um, and that Can't helps us. Can't tell them everything. The children are watching. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so how do you keep how do you keep um because this is one of the things that i get a lot of times in in relationships how do you keep folks out keep them out keep them out <laughs> you set boundaries yeah everything yeah. has to have a boundary this this is a line that you cannot cross um you keep folks out of your business on purpose um, and you have boundaries that you just lines that, that people can't cross and it's a violation and the two of us have determined that this is us and no one can interfere with that. Yeah, Kim, you have anything? No, I, I think I, I definitely agree with him. I and mean, you know, my 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 previous home um, that I had was um, a, a community house. Literally, like everybody. Just emails, 
everything. It has been amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say thank you enough. Love you so much. And here's a look back from last week's show. If I'm seven and I've had trauma, then I do what a seven-year-old would do. A lot of us, you know, and look, these things look different, and I'm sure that that will be expounded on um, mm -hmm. as we talk to, you know, certified clinicians in mm -hmm. terms of what that looks like. However, in my experience, that their child may have been given this diagnosis, and they'll be like, no, I'm not putting that label on my child. I don't want my child to have to have that label. That's not what I want to be associated with. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to follow them. Follow them through their lifetime, through their school, on their school record. So like, sometimes they just kind of by bypass. Wasn't that amazing? If you missed it, don't worry. You can catch the replay at www.coachkelly.net. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Coach Kelly Speaks. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Coach Kelly Speaks. We'll see you soon.